Welcome to the first of two media sociology screencasts looking at media representations of ethnicity. And this is the first section of a broad and popular examination topic on media representations. So before we look specifically at the topic of ethnicity, let's just briefly introduce this important concept of media representation. So a media representation refers to the idea that what we see in the media has been constructed. So what we need to remember is that although media representations can be made to appear to be so realistic that they seem to offer the audience um, a window on the world, what we're seeing is somebody else's interpretation of reality. So this term, media representation, describes the way in which the media show or demonstrate to the audience a version of the world, a version of social reality. So we need to remember that the mass media filters social reality and that all media representations are therefore shaped, selected and edited to influence audience perceptions, as we can see in this simple diagram. So media representations are not neutral. They are partial uh, bias representations of social reality and they're often a reflection of ideological power. Now a great deal of sociological work has been done on media representations of social groups such as media representations of ethnic minorities, men and women, uh, social classes and media representations of age, sexuality and disability. And over the next series of screencasts, we're going to be examining uh, this important sociological work. And this is an important area of sociological inquiry, because how the media uh, represents these social groups might in turn help to shape public attitudes, behaviour and politics towards these particular groups. And some of these social groups might be victims of symbolic annihilation within the mass media. And this term, which was coined by um, Tuchman, um, refers to the absence of representation or the under-representation of some group of people in the media. So it refers to the invisibility of certain groups within the mass media, their under-representation. And in addition to being underrepresented in the mass media, there might be certain social groups who are misrepresented within the media. So misrepresentation refers to uh, the way in which media representations might offer us a very distorted view of a particular group uh, within society. And often this happens through the use of stereotypes. So a stereotype uh, is a fixed over generalized belief about a particular group or class of people. So let's now begin to focus on media representations of ethnic minority groups. And I think most sociologists would argue that despite some progress, ethnic minority groups are still generally underrepresented within the British media or are represented in stereotyped and negative ways. Uh, across a range of media. So we're going to explore some of the negative myths and stereotypes about ethnic minority groups that are still very evident, uh, at least in some sections of the British mass media. And most sociologists would argue that these types of representations are problematic. They're problematic because they contribute to the reinforcement of negative racist stereotypes within society as a whole. And the recent Leveson inquiry on press standards uh, suggested that media representations of ethnic minorities may be undermining the concept of a tolerant uh, multicultural society and helping to perpetuate uh, social divisions based on colour, uh, ethnicity and religion. Now, one of the most negative media stereotypes uh, about ethnic minority groups is their association 
um, in some sections of the press with criminality. And black crime is the most frequent issue found in media news coverage of ethnic minorities. So, for example, Van Dyke found that black people, particularly those of African-Caribbean origin, tend to be portrayed as criminals, uh, especially in the tabloid press. So let's use the Daily Mail as a case study here. So in his recent book, Flat Earth News, Nick Davis uh, did content analysis on the pictures which appeared uh, in the Daily Mail's news and features pages over a nine-month period and logged the race of their subjects and found two things. Firstly, he found that the pictures were overwhelmingly of white people. But secondly, and perhaps even more striking, far more than anything else, the male's photographs of black people showed the faces of criminals. In fact, over this nine-month period, 64% of the pictures of black people in the Daily Mail's news and features pages were exclusively of muggers, murderers and rapists. And Watson notes that moral panics often result from the media stereotyping of black people as potentially criminal. And a recent example of that, perhaps, is some of the media reaction to the London riots, uh, when, for example, David Starkey uh, appeared on BBC Newsnight and appeared to blame black culture uh, for the London riots. Now, moral panic is an intense feeling expressed in a population uh, about a particular issue or social group that appears to threaten the social order. And the relationship between media representations of race and moral panics was first highlighted in the 1970s uh, by the sociologist Stuart Hall in a book called Police in the Crisis. So in this book, Stuart Hall uh, looks at the way in which a moral panic in the 1970s was constructed around the folk devil of the black mugger and how this particular uh, stereotyping and scapegoating of black youths uh, was used to divert attention away from the social and economic problems of British society in the 1970s. So in this screencast we've introduced the concept of media representations and we've started to look at some of the negative stereotypes associated with media representations of ethnic minorities. And we're going to have a look at some of the other myths and negative stereotypes in the next screencast.